Hello and welcome my gorgeous friends. So today uh what I'm going to be doing now is to Okay, let me just minimize this a little. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing in today's video is to set up uh our API. Like I need to set up the GraphQL endpoint now and also create a value notifier and a client that returns it returns the where that gives us access to pass our in our token to if we are using token to the endpoint and also define our URL classes and every other thing. So I'm going to explain this while we are moving on. So for you to understand. So the first thing we need to do, I'll go over here and copy the uh, the endpoint. So make sure you don't copy this one. Okay, it's not really a nice practice to copy that. Always copy the one that is here. Okay, but if your backend developer told you something, hey, I just updated the database. I just updated the API. So what you do is not you can. Just click on this refresh reload schema and it's going to reload the schema and then update it with the changes that the backend developer made. Okay, so I'm going to copy this now. You can see this stuff was hosted on heroku.com. Okay, so I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to paste it somewhere. So that's why I create a util class, more like uh, I can just call it url.dat and then I can create a final string. Uh, endpoint url okay you can define it here and close this stuff here all right so now we have our endpoint uh prefer const over final okay we can change this stuff all right this is just flutter lint doing this work so now i have the url that i'll be using feel free to use it uh as a free stuff feel free to use it so i'll go on sorry Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is to create the endpoint schema. So I do put this one inside the schema. So I'll just call it a URL endpoint. Okay, so I'm just going to create a simple uh, a simple class here, which is going to call I'm going to call it endpoint. So this is more like if you're making post requests, remember you always pass your headers. You also pass your your token for into the HTTP. You also pass your API keys. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I normally create a different class entirely to do that and then call the class whenever I want to make a request. Okay. Instead of writing it in each and every classes that I want to make the request in, I just have to call the class and then pass in the parameters that are required. Okay. So this should not overwhelm you and because it's very it's a very simple stuff we need to follow. Okay. I actually have some projects I have already done just to copy and paste it into this project. But I don't want to do that. I want to take everything from scratch. And that's why some part of these videos are going to be long. So just be uh stay calm with me. So the first thing I do is this is going to be a value, uh, a value notifier. Okay. So basically this value notifier it helps us to it uh has we're going to use the type of GraphQL client, so it helps to return the GraphQL client. That we can use to make our GraphQL request, like mutation, which is for post, and query, which is to get, and everything. Okay, so we're gonna have a value notifier, and then it has gonna has have a type of GraphQL. Yeah, GraphQL client, and you can close that. We can also give it a name, so just call it get clients. So two things we are gonna be passing here is. If you want, this uh, API does not require token, but if you want to pass a token or any other header, you can pass it here. But okay, I'll just put token here now, but I'm going to remove it later because we are not going to need token. But I want to show you how to add token in case your GraphQL endpoint needs a token. Okay. And then the second thing we are going to be adding is the URL, but it's not needed because I can just call it directly from here because it's already defined here. Okay. So I don't need to create that parameter for it. Okay. And then here I'm going to call a value notifier again. So I think I need to return this stuff because it's not returned. Okay, I need to import it. Sorry. Then here and I'm just going to return another client, which is going to be a value notifier with a type of GraphQL client. So this uh, function, this is just a function, and this is the return type, which is a value notifier. So I need to create stuff like that that we are going to return. So I will call this one client 
so it's going to be private inside here and it's going to be a variable and which i can say value notifier okay and it takes in a value we can just collapse that so just take note of this stuff it takes a value if you hover on it now forget all this linting on all those errors okay so if you hover on it now it takes uh name source files using lowercase uh, blah 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 don't worry we're going to fix that later so if you hover on it now you can see the value is a graphql client okay so which is something we need to create and i'll just create a graphql client here yep and it takes a cache and a link so the link is going just going to be where we are going to add the link that we want to return and also the various headers okay so i'll just set the link so if you hover on it now i think it should have Okay, there's no uh, explanation on that. So I'll just return HTTP client. No, HTTP link, sorry. Uh, HTTP link. So it takes the URI. That is the URL of the endpoint you want to make. So in this case, now the URL is stored here already. So I'm just going to call this endpoint URL. Okay, to replace that stuff there. Okay, I'll make sure you import it yeah make sure you import it it should come up oops uh it's not coming up but we are going to fix that later on so uh, assuming you want to add some headers there's always something called default headers okay so this is let me import this first okay so i don't know what's why this stuff is misbehaving right now but let me see if i can use the shortcut okay yeah that did the trick so uh this default headers i need to I think this stuff are not clear for now so i'm just going to uh finish it off first before i add the default headers okay then we are going to add a cache so it's more like the in-memory store uh, it does not persist to disk okay so the default uh, memory store that is used for a uh, graphql is the hive store okay is the hive store okay so i'll just create a cache here GraphQL is actually nice because sometimes it helps you if you create your fetch policies sometimes it helps you to fetch from cache fetch from internet just you know even if you don't have internet connection you can still make get and get your data so it's actually nice so we define the store here and i'm going to be using hive store okay like so and you can close this and close this as well so here we can close this also and then finally, what I'll do to eliminate all this linting is just to return the client. Okay, I think all this linting are still here. So what I'm going to do, I just think I need to ignore them. So now it's okay. I didn't do anything. Yeah, I know I didn't do anything. But for now, let's just move fast. And I've added the URL and I'm also creating the uh, value notifier client. So let's say, assuming you want to add some default headers, uh, you might have something like authorization yeah you might have something like authorization and that authorization you want to add the bearer uh, which is the token so you can always add the token this way that's if that's if your endpoint requires a token okay and okay this stuff is back again but don't worry it's a minor challenge so if you want to add a token fine they also want to add some api key so i don't know how you want to add it the same thing you do you do when you want to add uh headers to your http request so that's the same thing you can do here but since this uh, endpoint does not require any headers i'm going to remove that and also this token i'm going to take it off okay so now we have successfully created our end point where we can use to retrieve our uh, the url and make the request and also a catch high store okay i also think we need to initialize something in main dot that which is here so i need to call this a sync okay okay then i can call await high store dot open boss i think Yeah, high store open box. But if it's not it, we are gonna fi fix it later. But I'm not really sure of that. But uh, without further ado, I think I'm gonna end this video here. 
Then in the next section, we are going to check if this stuff is actually the correct one because I'm going to do some expo in some of my projects. Okay, to see if this stuff is actually the correct uh, uh, statement I'm supposed to pass here. And then I'm going to show you, the first thing we are going to do is create our providers to add our first to do to the database. Okay, thank you so much guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.